Today's build is about unlimited power. We are focusing on the Psy Freak today, channeling all sorts of voodoo magic to take down enemies primarily from range. We are basically Emperor Palpatine and the other mutants are the Jedi. Let's execute order 66. This is a slightly longer build, there's a lot to go through, so strap in. I've got chapters, all that good stuff down in the description down below. If you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. Let's go. So primarily this build focuses on using the Psy ability, specifically Key Spark as our primary ability, which makes your fingers let loose a constant stream of electricity. We are also using the Brain Drain perk a lot that will give us health back for every tick of electricity that we are doing. And basically this just makes us unkillable. As long as you can keep Key Spark up, you cannot die because you're constantly healing with every single tick of electricity. Getting to this point as the Psy Freak though does take time. This isn't a quick build that you can do up to you know level five and then you're instantly unkillable it will take you until at least around level 15 to get this perk and then next couple of levels just to level out your character and get the damage up high enough in the early stages of the game while your damage is low you will need to mix in some melee and ranged combat which is pretty difficult if you don't have a high enough vitality but once you do have your intellect high enough and you have stacked it enough your power damage does increase you can just become an unkillable god now let's break down how you get to this point. We're going to start with the breed and the class. Our breed is going to be the FIP. This is the class that has the highest starting intelligence, which is basically what this build really needs. It gives us our key energy. It gives us our key energy regen, as well as our power damage for the Psy abilities. This is really the best option for breed. You could go the Rex. They are pretty cute. If you like the cuteness of the Rex, maybe go them. They do have a decent intelligence, but the class we are picking is the Psy Freak. You have to pick the Psy Freak. You do get Spark Ball and the Mega mind abilities to start off with. Sparkball is the key here. Sparkball will allow you to use some of these Psy abilities in the early stages of the game and actually deal a decent amount of damage as you do just get this ability right off the bat. Until you do have enough damage, you will only use this as more of a damage dealer and then finish off with a melee or a ranged ability. It's just to start off combat, get you used to using Psy abilities, then eventually this will become your primary damage dealer. Your attributes for this build is really intellect. That's all you need to focus on. In the early stages of the game, especially if you're playing on the new extreme difficulty, you may want to put some points into vitality just so you feel a little bit safer, you have a little bit more health and armor. But if you aren't struggling and you aren't playing on the hardest difficulty, just completely stack intellect, you will be absolutely fine. For your perks, now we are going to focus on the class perks primarily as everything in the class perks here really benefits this build. Build. You do start off with Spark Ball and Mega Mind, as mentioned, but when you buy perks, you don't really want to get Nocturnal straight away. It does give you a plus 10 intellect attribute at night, but it's not night all of the time, and 10 intellect is just how much you would get if you leveled up again anyway, so it's not a huge upgrade to get, but it is a good one to pick up eventually. Mind Meld and Psy Sparks are the two key ones you want to spend your upgrade points on. Mind Meld, Power Damage Abilities Attacks have a 10% chance to inflict a critical hit. This has been fixed. This will now give all of your Psy abilities a 10% chance to critically hit. I have seen this happen. It doesn't happen very often. It's only 10%, but it does happen. This stat and this perk is separate to your normal critical hit chance from what I have found, but you do get a critical hit occasionally with your Psy abilities. Now, Psy Spikes is the key one. Your power damage attacks inflict 10% more damage to the target. This is the only way that you can directly increase your power damage via a perk, and you should pick this up as soon as possible. Once you hit level 15, Brain Drain attacks that inflict power damage, which is all of your Psy abilities, regenerate your health by 20%. This will make you unstoppable and this will make sure you never die. Highly recommend picking this up as soon as you hit level 15, then you are pretty much complete with this build as long as you get key sparks around the same level. For general perks, key energize is the main one you want to focus on. Every time you initiate a Wung Fu special attack, you can press a button that will regenerate some of your key energy. For me, this is LB on the Xbox controller, but it'll be different for you if you're not playing with an Xbox controller. This is basically what I do when I run out of key energy and I need some back. I initiate a Wung Fu, get some key energy, and away I go. I also recommend picking up 
plating so that your clothes and equipment have a higher armor value and it's increased by 25%. This is just a good idea for the higher difficulties. Same with adrenaline, though it's not critical that you do pick this up, just increases your health regen by 40%, but it does become null and void once you get brain drain. The benefit for this build is that once you get into your Wang Fu powers, you can actually spend most of your upgrade points into Wang Fu or any of the other perks that you choose to spend them in. For Wang Fu, primarily we are using this for the key energized perk so that when you are running low on key, you can perform a Wang Fu, hit the button, get some key back, then start using your Psy abilities again. This means that your Wang Fu's really just need to focus on the melee weapon and the ranged weapon that you're using. Just buy whatever the Wang Fu's are in that category, then you can use them to just get that back. I also wouldn't use Super Wang Fu in this build. It actually lowers your damage output because we don't have a high ranged or melee damage, so I pretty much just ignore it with this build completely. Now, the big, most important thing for any Psy Freak, really, is the Psy and Mutations. Now, primarily, I would suggest that you experiment with all of them, find what works for you, and what is fun for you. Builds and the game should all be about fun. Psy abilities are a ton of fun, but... The three that you specifically need to make this build work is Blaze. It's just going to pretty much operate as your dodge ability. I have mapped this to the same button as my dodge. So on my Xbox controller, it's B. When I hold the left trigger to initiate a Psy ability, it's also mapped to B. So then I always know this button will make me dodge. It also doesn't cancel your key spark. Whereas if you take damage, it will cancel your key spark. So this is a good way to avoid damage, Blaze to some other direction, then keep spamming them with electricity. I also recommend Mothmouth, which you can get very early in the game. It's a biogenetics ability. This will take some of the heat off you so that enemies attack each other rather than you. This is really valuable in the early stages when you're struggling to stay alive and kill things at a fast rate. This will just remove some of that aspects of damage that's coming towards you. And obviously, Key Spark is the primary damage dealer that we're going to unlock. Once you have got this, this will just take over wherever Spark Ball is in your rotation of abilities. Before this, use Spark Ball. Once you've got Key Spark, it's just Key Spark completely. You don't need Spark Ball anymore. I have played around with most of the other abilities on my multiple playthroughs and we'll cover some of them here but really I highly suggest to just experiment and find what's fun for you. Sky Spark is an interesting one because it does deal a lot of damage but it requires a lot of key energy that is probably better used for Key Spark or some of your other primary abilities. I find it's okay to use but it's maybe more situational than it needs to be. Levitate is just not needed for this build. It moves you too far away from the enemies, so your key spark can't actually hit. Wouldn't recommend using it. Sizzle Ball is basically Spark Ball, but fire. Really up to you if you want to use it. Freeze doesn't deal a lot of damage. It's a good AoE though, and it's better for a melee build if you are focusing on a melee build or a hybrid between Psy and melee. Blink is a worse version of Blaze, although it does deal a slightly more bit of damage. It's just not really worth it. Telekinesis is just a fun ability to have. It doesn't really deal a whole lot of damage or do anything specific. It's just fun. In your biogenetics, these are much more situational, but the key one you want to pick up is Rad Wisps. I find that using Rad Wisps with Key Spark is just kind of broken because you can channel both of these abilities at the same time. This will just increase your damage output by a huge amount. Key Sparks will hit anything in close range to you. Rad Wisps will hit things in a distance and you'll just basically destroy the entire battlefield. The other bio powers other than Mothmouth and Rad Wisps, I don't really find valuable in any specific way. Mucus Bubble is a good movement ability. The rest though i just don't think they're really valuable to use very often although if they're fun to you go for it weapons and armor for your armor key energy primarily is what you want to focus on with energy regen being the secondary focus if the armor value is low don't worry about it. Just put mods on the gear that increases its armor value. Primarily, you want to have a high enough key energy so that you can keep spamming key spark. Doesn't matter if you're taking a higher amount of damage because you're just going to regen all of your health anyway. For weapons, it's literally up to you. I prefer the pre mergle sword for this build as it does a really high amount of damage and it doesn't have a strength cost. I have zero strength with this build, but I can use this weapon and still deal a decent amount of damage when I do want to use my Wang Fu abilities. If you want to know where to find this weapon, check out my 10 secrets of Biomutant video, which has a full guide on how to find this weapon. Ranged weapons, you can use whatever you like. Whatever does the most amount of damage, same as melee weapons, it's really up to you. For some other Psy Freak tips, now taking damage cancels your key spark. Use Blaze to dodge these abilities so that you can keep spamming.
Miami or Key Spark without it being interrupted. This will keep it active and keep you using it. You can't target turrets with Key Spark, so you will have to use your ranged weapon occasionally just to take out these. Keep an eye on how much key you actually have, because as you start to run out, if you go over the amount you have, it will take a slightly longer time to regen, but you also won't be able to dodge or parry as they both use some of your key energy. It's only a little bit, but you do need some just to be able to cast these abilities. You don't want to get stuck when this damage is coming your way. You've used all of your key energy and you can't avoid the damage. So make sure you save a little bit just to dodge and use your Wang Fu abilities to maximize your key energy regen throughout combat. In the early game, you are going to struggle a lot with this build, especially with Psy Freaks overall, because you do have a low amount of health, you don't do a lot of range damage, and you don't do a lot of melee damage. Psy abilities take a long time to be really strong, but once they are, they are extremely powerful. If you are playing a Psy Freak, I recommend to stick with it. You will eventually become a god. You've just got to get past that initial grind at the start of the game. Use the other abilities at your disposal, your melee, your ranged. Make sure you put a couple of points into vitality. Find what feels good, and you will make it to the big time. If you're looking for more Biomutant content, check out my 10 secrets for Biomutant video that goes through weapons and mounts that you can find throughout the game, as well as some other things that you can also find. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and on Twitch, where you can find me streaming two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, Australian night times. Hope to see you guys there in the next stream. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Norza, and I hope you have a great day.